So um, thank you. Uh, thank you for coming in in such a on such beautiful day. And uh, I want to follow up um, with what Deepak has told you about the enormous potential um, of regenerative medicine that has changed uh, many uh, disease fields. And what I will focus on is uh, on brain disease um, called, um, in, in particular, Alzheimer's disease. Um, so you heard from the news, Alzheimer's disease has gained a lot of media attention. It is the most common form of dementia uh, in the elderly. And um, even in the, just in the United States alone, there are five million um, uh, of the um, Alzheimer patients. And um, this is a devastating disease. It robs people of their memory and as well as the ability to think. And the reason for that is because the regions that are responsible for those functions, such as memory, new memory formation, are severely damaged um, uh, in the AD patients. So um, there are currently no treatment that can slow down the progression of the disease. Um, and you may have heard from the news there are um, more recent failed clinical trials. Um, and partially, um, or there are many explanations, but partially is that um, this treatment may not be able to reverse or repair the existing damages that have already occurred um, in these patients' brains. So can we harness the power of uh, stem cell um, uh, therapy in, um, to treat AD? So um, the... Before I go into that, so I will tell you uh, two potential approaches that have been, uh, uh, been actively pursued at, at Glassstone. But before I uh, go into that, I want to remind you that how complicated uh, our brains are. So um, it is, you know, arguably the most complicated and least understood organ uh, in our body. Uh, maybe uh, heart is another one. <laughs> heart is simple. <laughs> um, and just... There are 100 billion neurons uh, in our brain, and 10 to 50 uh, fold more of the glial cells, uh, supporting cells, uh, more than the neurons. And these 100 billion neurons form massive uh, uh, communication networks that are constantly shaped by experience, such as formation of new memory. So as you hear me speak, um, the, the information is processed by the neural networks and also the new memory um, is formed. And in the AD patients, uh, the, these networks or these connections are lost and many neurons are lost as well. So the traditional wisdom is that it will be very difficult to use stem cell therapy, in this case, uh, cell replacement therapy to treat AD because you can imagine how you can place these large numbers of neurons at the right place and form the right connections. So the um, two approaches I'm going to mention to you um, is, trying, is challenge this traditional wisdom. And I think we believe the key is to select the right type of cells um, that may overcome some of the limitations. And the first approach um, is a type of cell called interneurons. So interneurons, you, we, there are many, many subtypes of neuro, new, uh, neurons in our, in our brain, and interneurons is one type of it. It has, it contain, account for a very small percentage of total neuron population, but it has uh, tremendous effects on the neural network. And the reason for that is one single interneuron directly communicates to 3,000 or more of other neurons and they, they modulate their activity. So to use an analogy, um, interneurons are like conductors in a symphony. The, so a very small number of them can actually have a profound effect on the network function as well as brain function. So actually several labs at the Glassstone have made uh, important discoveries to find that interneurons are dysfunctional in AD brains and the dysfunction and loss of the interneurons in the uh, AD brains play an important role to the cognitive decline um, in, AD, uh, in the, in the AD-related um, dementia. 
So more recently, um, Yadong Huang's lab at Glassdome has reprogrammed using the, the, the power of, uh, of uh, um, the iPSC technology to reprogram stem cells, human stem cells, into interneurons. They have actually introduced these inter this, um, reprogrammed interneurons into AD mouse models. And they put in a region that's responsible for the memory called the hippocampus. And they found that um, in, the, in their initial analysis, it's quite encouraging. So they found that not only those reprogrammed interneurons can replenish the lost interneurons in these very old AD mouse models, they can also improve the learning and memory uh, of these mice. So they are expanding the continue to test this in animal models, expanding uh, the repertoire of, uh, of uh, um, readouts. Uh, but in, um, the ultimate goal is to hope to introduce these reprogrammed human, stem, uh, human interneurons into AD patients once we uh, know more about it in clinical trials. Um, the second approach I want to um, discuss is to follow up on what uh, Deepak told you in the uh, cancer field, is to restore the immune system in the brain using stem cell technology. So we know that immune system in our body are our body's defense mechanism. And um, brain's immune cells are called microglia. They um, uh, defend, so like other immune cells, they defend our brain um, from uh, invaders such as infections, but also the buildup of protein aggregates that often occur in the aging brain. They account for a very small percentage of um, brain cells, but they are enormously important uh, in, the, uh, in, in, in maintaining a healthy uh, brain environment. So can we build, so in AD brains, actually, the immune system in our brain is not working well. Microglia are dysfunctional, so that's why we have the buildup of uh, protein aggregates uh, in particular, like am amyloid plaques. They also have turned down the um, toxic expression of toxic factors that actually causing collateral damage to the surrounding neurons. So can we restore or rebuild brain's uh, defense mechanism uh, in AD? There are reasons to be optimistic. And the reason is that microglia are actually programmed to go to where injury sites are. In another word, um, they, could they, they seem to have an internal GPS system to tell them where they go, uh, where they're mostly needed, because that's how they are programmed. Another reason to be optimistic is microglia is a type of cell that's known to secrete factors uh, or release factors that influence the neighboring cell, that's how they become toxic when, when toxic factors are turned, are, are, turned, uh, are turned on. So for these reasons that we think that it is possible to have a reprogrammed uh, microglia to rebuild the defense system. So how do we go about it? Um, we have built, um, uh, established a very efficient platform that allow us to reprogram human stem cells into microglia. So we have, try we have put um, those uh, um, reprogrammed microglia into the brain of AD mouse models. So what we are um, um, testing whether those uh, new immune cells will be beneficial. But in the meantime, we are uh, taking advantage of this new genomic editing technology to build designer microglia from the human stem cells by taking out the toxic factors that get turned on during the AD, but enhancing um, the genes that are truly functional, important for the function of microglia. So we're hoping that this designer microglia can actually help restore uh, the defense system uh, in the brain. So these are early days, and we have long road um, ahead of us. Um, but I'm very excited uh, to share some thoughts with you today uh, about um, the enormous potential of uh, using the technology um, to treat um, AD 
uh, and other brain diseases. And uh, I'm happy to answer questions during Q&A and also uh, in the breakout sessions. Thank you.